special guest, uh, Susan Mackesy and Daryl Brisebois. Brisebois. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Did I get it right? Got it right, you got it right the first time. He forgot Scotty, so he's going to turn us off now and do his own thing. Terrible English accent. And hello, Scotty. How are you, darling? All right? Okay. Anyway, this is going to be, um, well, this is, this is very special actually today for two reasons. One, I finally get to meet you, Susan. Yes, finally. And Daryl and your wonderful, lovely people. feel like I've known you forever, actually. Yeah, They've been that's plotting right. this game on Facebook for a long time now. Yes. And secondly, yes. We're, we are certainly going to be well informed today of this uh, serious, very serious business of hoarding. And Susan's going to well, tell us all about it. Well, there's another issue, too, that we talked about over lunch, and I want to bring that up as well. Okay, all right. Well, yeah. that too. Sorry, did it's I miss tied in. Well, it's a little bit tied into the animal hoarding. It's, a, okay. it's something else that's going on, which I'll... All right. have to Susan's going to tell oh, us. Yep. Uh, Daryl, yeah, you can sing a song if you like, because no, he's no, a musician no. too. There's, there's, there's a guitar right, right behind I'm the chair. I'm just going to do the Walter today. Okay. <laughs> yes, Shaman and Walter, we say hi to you if you get okay. to hear this show. And uh, obviously we miss you. But you know what, Susan, it's good Shaman's not here today because you and I get a word in edgeways. <laughs> uh, absolutely. <laughs> but we do Did miss you Charmin. hear that, Shaman? <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. No, Shaman's always there for us. Yes, and, uh, exactly. We, we do miss you, Shaman. We certainly do. And, and Walter, too. Yeah, I've got a Walter. supply waiting for you, Walter. Get your ass down. Yeah, <laughs> and Daryl's going to well, try to be a Walter today. Yes, I'm filling Walter's shoes. That's so I shall, right. Uh, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go here. And first of all, I have to start with my rants. Oh, no. Oh, stop it, Richard. <laughs> oh, please. It's very important, and Susan totally agrees Emma, with me. Emma, there's only 26 yes. minutes left in the show. All right, stop. All right, let me go quickly. Stop the puppy mills. Get rid of them. We have far too many. We've got about 18 just out here in this area, and it's disgusting. It's horrible. And also, just in general, there's just so many shitty things going on all over Beep. the place. There's no beeping. Scotty doesn't Scotty's, beep. Scotty's... He's mean, not as fast on the fingers I can, as he used to be. I won't even but... watch the Olympics right now, to be honest with you, because as much as I love those beautiful athletes, and some of them done, have done a, some beautiful... made a, some really good gestures about rescuing some of those puppies, as you know, um, most people know that they literally murdered God knows how many dogs just to make the place look clean for the Olympics. I mean, what is that? unbelievable unreal so i haven't been watching the olympics and i would have loved to have watched it what's and amazing is that they've known that these games are going to be here for years now yeah and it, they waited until the last minute when actually tourists are arriving and the yeah. uh the sports participants are arriving to start culling animals i mean yeah what? And also the zoos, the one in Denmark, that beautiful Copenhagen. giraffe, Mar Copenhagen, uh, another one, uh, Marius, and then now there's going to be another one, the lions, and doing this in front of kids, killing them and dissecting them in the front kids? of kids. Yes. No. They did it, it in, front, in, in front, front of, the, of kids. the kids. Oh, in front of the kids. I thought they were no. killing and dissecting Rich kids. Is trying, in the zoo well, that's probably next. I mean, that's, yeah, you know, where well, do we actually, start? there's a very fine line. There is a fine yes. line. I mean, this is absolutely out of hand. And Daryl, you and I were just saying at lunch, right, that... Um, how disappointed, and it seems to have gotten worse in many ways, uh, the, the human, the human nature, condition, the human yeah. condition. And, you know, I, I feel that, and I'm a lot older than you. You're still a baby. And so um, I'm really getting down with this and very... Uh, maybe it's because I'm being exposed much more now than ever before, and we do have the media. And you know what? I actually thank God for it because if we didn't know of all these things, we wouldn't be able to change. That's right, and it is very hard to change. Exactly. And, you know, no matter what, it's out there. But what's going to happen? They're still killing the dogs yeah. at the Olympics. You know yeah. it. And then the disgusting fur trade in China. Like, do we really need a bit of fur right. around our necks? No, we don't. We don't need that. We've got many synthetic things. The better to strangle you with, Listen, my I, dear. People think I'm a crazy animal activist. And, no, you know, no, I, no. I have to buy meat because my dogs eat meat. But I go to farms around here where I know, I see the animals. They are ethically treated. Okay, I mean, all right. They're killed in the end. And I have a hard time with this too because I haven't totally given up on meat. I'm not a total vegetarian. But the more I'm seeing and the more I'm hearing, the less we're eating. Well, that's the thing. Of, People capitalize on animals yeah, and, you know, everything. 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 And then we use them as blind dogs and sniffing that's out right. bombs in countries. Right. They've got 
Oh, anyway. The, okay, ranting over because we have a very important... Okay, this uh, is a record. Is this a record? It's yeah. short. A record, yes, basically a three-minute rant. Okay, but on the good side, though, Susan, I have to say the good side too, okay, that there are a lot of wonderful people out there who are doing their utmost to do to do the right thing. And people like yourself, Susan, I mean, this is amazing. And you're picking up on something that I am sure a lot of people did not know about. I mean, I didn't. I, a lot of people don't know about no, this. No, they don't. No. And I've seen these hoarding things on television where people collect things, uh, yes. you know, everything, newspapers, blah, 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 blah. And at first I thought, hoarding? Am I a hoarder? Because I've got five <laughs> dogs and a cat, you know. But you explain yes, it, Susan, yes, you help are. us. I am not a hoarder. <laughs> no, you're absolutely not a hoarder. I just collect men. No, that's not true. <laughs> so They're all the hidden. Those are strange noises I hear coming from the basement at night. <laughs> all right. I will shut up for a, for a bit. And There's another first. And uh -oh. Susan, if there's any See, questions, can we, we, we can Absolutely. ask you. Absolutely, yes, yes, and, for sure. And Daryl will give his pennies worth too, right? Daryl, thank God for Daryl. Yeah, he's always bless He's him. always standing by me patiently. And with so uh, Richard. And Richard yeah. as well. Well, I'm not no. usually standing by Susan, no. No, but by me. Or Daryl. Yes, yes. But you, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Susan, I hand it over to you. Okay, well, what I'm here to talk about is the hoarding situation. It, it happens all over North America, global, you know, globally as well. But here in Montreal, we have a situation that I like to call passive cruelty. There are several establishments in and around the outskirts of Montreal and in Montreal that are hoarding animals, but they are camouflaging themselves as rescues. So these animals, there could be two, three, four hundred animals in a, a warehouse setting. They're not getting the vet care that they need. They're not being adopted out. I mean, there was a select group of animals that are being, uh, you know, adopted out. The others are suffering. And I went into one place called Animal Rescue Network um, that is a well-known, they call themselves the largest no-kill rescue in Montreal. It is not a rescue. Um, I have no, I've been in there myself personally, so I have no problem saying what I saw. Okay. I saw about 95 animals in one area that were the healthy animals. They were the adoptable ones. That is who people see when they go in there. 95 out of how many? 295 oh was when I asked the volunteer. It's very secretive. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole area where cats are kept in cages for months on end. Um, notes on the cages saying, well, this animal is suffering. He needs dental care, but we can't pay for it. So he is not um, a priority of Animal Rescue Network. If a volunteer would like to, to pay, please come forward. Another animal, it, there was a note saying the animal had not gone to the bathroom in seven days. Oh, my God. To me, the animal looked half conscious. I mentioned that the animal needed to go to the vet. Uh, I was told there's no money for this. Mm. This organization's collecting charitable donations from people. In the past seven years, they've, made near, they've received nearly $2 million. Yet there's litter missing. The volunteers are having to pay for litter. There's not enough money for the operations. It's they don't believe in euthanasia. They keep the animals alive that have diseases like feline leukemia, mouth ulcers, no quality of life and no hope. Even with vet treatment, they'll, they will not get better. This is what people are giving their donations to, not realizing what's going on on the inside. It's a warehousing of animals. When you're saying that she says the volunteers could pay for that cat to be free, are she's talking about the volunteers who are working there? Yes. So there's no. So not only do they volunteer to work there, but now they they pay for being the asked. operations. Wow. Yeah, yeah. There's animals. That's pretty sad. It's it's unethical. It you is. You know, unethical. there was one case of an animal that ha was brought to the vet. They do vetting sporadically. I haven't quite figured out. You know, I've interviewed a lot of their volunteers that are really unhappy with the situation. One animal was brought to the vet, diagnosed with terminal cancer, encouraged to euthanize the animal brought the animal back oh, it lived no. for seven days in a k in the bottom of a cage in a fetal position purring in pain uh until finally there was pressure to bring the cat in and be euthanized a week later but it it lived an extra seven days in the bottom in of misery the in mm -hmm. misery yeah. oh my goodness mm. 
they have you know, you know they have diseases they're kept in different sections of the place um they're they're we were told not adoptable and it's a very sad situation. It's not the only organization in Montreal or mm -hmm. around Montreal. So I do have a question on yeah. that, if I might ask you, Susan. So someone like me who doesn't know all the organizations and I don't pretend to know everything there is to know mm -hmm. either, I yes, just can't do. stand being silent anymore about right. what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. And it's getting more and more. But how, when I'm looking, do I know for sure that this particular organization is doing what they should be doing and spending you're whatever about, money you're talking about a specific one or just in general well in general so you wanted to adopt a cat how would you find no a but place they're calling them that? shelters humane like what, what was right. the name of they this call one themselves uh the largest no-kill shelter in montreal okay now how would i know if i saw that uh th that they're good and they're doing what i would hope they would be doing which they certainly are not there's a few really easy ways to tell when you when you finally realize the situation. One is if, if a shelter has 295 cats, I'd like to see the whole, you know, the whole situation. It's it's very difficult to have 200 cats are not pack animals. No. So you don't want 95 cats in one room, 20 cats in a small little room. Like if you see that, that should be, you know. A warning sign. A warning sign. Mm. Um, if they're secretive and they say, "Please, I'll," you know, they'll they'll speak to you on the phone and if they say, "Okay, I'm giving you our address, but please do not tell anybody where we are." They should be transparent, as you were saying, yes. Richard. Right. There should be transparency. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's. It is difficult. You can ask vets. Some vets are not are could even recommend these places but you know if you can ask around as well there should be a, a good adoption rate mm. there shouldn't be cats that um have feline leukemia kept in with others with are. with others yeah. you know the cats need to be vaccinated sterilized other than that it's people don't realize it it's about getting the word out and animal rescue network has too many cats and the bottom line is the cats are have viruses. They're not taking the proper precautions. And it is difficult to really, really tell. But, but one of the things is secrecy, adoption rate, and the vast numbers, having that many animals, I'd want to see the situation myself mm -hmm. before adopting a cat. Because you could very well adopt a sick cat from there. And you're also giving money to places that you think are taking care well, of these animals. that's another thing, because I know some very wonderful people who do give money, and uh, maybe they're not sure where their money is going. It's actually not the only... There are other organizations, like these World Food Programs and for kids, and yes. and they're just showing you now the statistics of, what, 80% doesn't get there? That that's 80% right. is going to pay for something that's else? That's right. So what is there any be? sort of a, a place where you can get references? And I'm thinking of different things. I was on a tool site yesterday and uh, looking at a specific uh, piece of equipment. And they were talking about the different references that they'd received from people who had bought this equipment. And some of them were uh, positive, some were negative. And, but they listed them all. And they didn't pull any punches if somebody had something negative to say. They, they pre mm. published it as well. And um, so... I'm just wondering, is there some place like that where there's comments that can be collected about different uh, organizations? And They're pretty, they, they, they do have a message, they have several message boards, but they screen very, so if somebody well, writes yes, something negative, it's, it's removed. That's right. Hmm. Okay. So it's really That's difficult. Um, honestly, they've been operating for a long time, and I've gotten a lot of criticism for bringing this forward. Uh, a lot of people are saying, well, they're doing their best. But they're not doing no, their best. No, they're not doing their and It's not. It is very, th this is why I'm speaking out about it, because there's no resources to say, we don't have enough laws in Quebec. So there's no, no regulations to say, well, mm. this is the max amount of animals that you have. Um, this is the vet care that needs to be done. We don't have I, that. I think there was a law that was passed recently, and the number 51 st sticks in my mind. But uh, basically, I from what I remember, the the laws are there as to what conditions your animals can be kept in. Yeah, roof over your head. And how they have to be fed and have to be vetted and that sort of stuff. Uh, the laws are there, but basically they were very it's the weak. enforcement. No, no, the laws are there. It's the, the enforcement that's a problem. Yes, it's, yes. It's so who would be responsible? If I, 
knew of this right here in mm -hmm. Knowlton. Well, actually, no, that's not true. We have Carl Girard. Mm -hmm. He's been in point. Uh, he has been. A point. Do you know him, Carl? I know of him. Oh, you know of him. Mm -hmm. So his okay. reputation has got all the way to Montreal, has it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. But um, no, there's there are people that care and, and yeah. are putting things in place. Well, and, right. He was appointed by the municipalities to to raid these puppy mills. And right. I must admit, when I went there, the the shelter itself, that's where we got Jackie from, and you met Jackie yes, today. Yes, adorable. Um, I know money's short, but for me, it's like only one step up from a puppy mill because they're still. Well, in it's overwhelming snake. because it's they overwhelming. have to look after these animals. They can't you know. just throw them into a huge pot there like you were saying and expect them to get along. Who can take these animals? There has to you know, be a better way. Um, this and is not to, the answer. This no, is, this is but not. don't. Isn't this what we need? Is this not what we need, though, Susan? Uh, people who, um, I mean, Quebec is huge. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's huge. H how do you? How can there be some control? It's very difficult because the organization MAPAC, which is the government organization, there is a law. If you, if the cat is or dog is not getting proper vet care, is neglected. That's that is grounds for a seizure or for you know. Uh, but who seizes them? Well, MAPAC will go in. Oh, they'll go. They in. will, and they they will plan it, and and you know it's not something you can't take two hundred cats away um, tomorrow. No. There has to be a plan because they have to go somewhere well, to it. be taken that's care of. That's exactly it. Yeah. But the questions that they ask you basically are: Do these cats have enough water? Do they have enough yeah. food? Do they, are they in big enough cages? That's that's the extent of it. Um, mm. When I reported Animal Rescue Network with the photos that I took to them, they went in within 90 hours. Mm. But it's very easy to to talk through it and say, well, this animal's we're caring for this animal, we're caring for that animal. Mm. There needs to be a vet brought in, yeah. and the vet can easily tell you this cat has these are viruses that animals have: feline leukemia combined with mouth ulcers, mm. ringworm, uh, rhino. Oh, gosh. These, the, they're in their secondary. These are all secondary viruses because this animal's dying. Yeah. Don't keep this animal alive no. for, for three, six months in a cage until it's yeah. barely, you know, hanging on. So the map, it's, it's the laws. Mm. We need to have anti-hoarding laws. We need to have regulations. It needs, they need to be checked every six mm. months. It's or, the checking. That they need to mm -hmm. do. There, but this there is, needs a, this to be is the oversight. what we don't have, though, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, every time the government wants to to get up some kind of a group of people to discuss and do this and what, <laughs> the government. I brought the government in. I mean, they pay all these freaking people t to do something. Okay. Yeah. Like we don't seem to have anybody. If the Berger Blanc was allowed to stay open, I mean, the Berger. They were terrible. I heard. But they're still open. Where I mean, they? come on. They're in Montreal, right? They're in Montreal. But I thought they were closed down. No, they're not closed down. They they did get stipulations from APAC that um, if they're doing a euthanasia, a vet has to be present. Because, they. I mean, you saw some of the video. I could barely look at it. Daryl oh. uh, recorded a song dedicated to Berger Blanc, uh, closing it down, and, and he did a beautiful video montage that was very difficult to look at. Um, but to me, if if they can actually keep Ber uh, Berger Blanc open, how are we going to put checks on animal rescue networks? Because they're passive cruelty. You don't see them. Mm -hmm. We would need them to be strangling a cat before something, you know, in front of the camera before something gets done. So the only answer that I have right now is public. Public needs to be aware. Don't right. give the. Don't bring a stray cat to them. Don't give money to them. Unfortunately, or if you want to donate to them, bring them food, food. and yeah. litter. Give or that's take a good right. idea. Yeah. Take one of the animals. Say, look, I'll bring the animal into the vet. That's I'll right. pay for that today. But, that, but yeah. Susan said they don't want to do that. They don't well, want you to take an animal. They will. They do vet periodically. I mean, there's there's very high vet bills that they have. What they do is they go. They will sterilize every animal. Yeah. They will test the animals for FIV and feline leukemia. If they're positive, they get put in a special room for the end of their lives. So say a room like this may have 10... Palliative care. Palliative care. Exactly. It's like a hospice. No quality of life. None. They will. They have a fridge full of medication. So they will... The volunteers will... Certain volunteers will deem which medication. If a cat is quite sick and there's funds, they'll take them to the vet. But they will keep them 
if the vet suggests euthanasia, probably be going back until the situation gets worse. If the cat has dental problems, you know, you've got caring volunteers, so there's pressure there. Mm -hmm. They'll say, well, can we bring this cat to the vet? Well, there's no money. Well, I'm willing to pay the operation. A volunteer oh, might say, okay, goodness. bring the cat. So that's how, that's how it works. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. And this is not second-hand information. I, I've been in twice to that location. I've interviewed numerous volunteers and ex-volunteers. And I've gone to a second location where there's 90 cats loose, not looking very well. I, I got the tour from the, um, the landlord, mm. the owner, the uh, operator of this operation has not paid the rent in four months. Mm -hmm. And there are 90 cats you know, loose and... This is in a bungalow, you were just saying. Um, no, uh, that's actually her home. I don't know how many cats she has exactly in her home because I haven't been there. But this is, there's the Animal Rescue Network, and then there's a second location about five minutes away that has 90 cats. She's facing eviction because she hasn't paid her rent. And well, there's then, two women doing this. This is we're one woman. Yeah. There's another place um, on the outskirts of Montreal that um, is, they're related friendship-wise. Okay. She has hundreds, uh, not vaccinated, mm -hmm. not sterile. Uh, so I think they're probably sterilized, but they're mm -hmm. not vaccinated. There's no money for medication. Um, the reason I know this is I spoke to her on the phone at length. Mm -hmm. So there's, um, you know, no euthanasia, no adoptions. Yet it's a charitable organization. So and they have a, a website. Web, well, I don't, I think. Oh, my gosh. In that case, if you've got 500 cats, you need a lot of money. Oh, you're not kidding. That's a lot of, we got, a lot of food. We just got five dogs. That is a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No holidays for us. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, you know, I still keep wanting to go back to this thing about um, shouldn't this be at a government level yes. where the sh we need these laws coming from? But it's all very well. Th then they've got to be. Enforced. enforced enforced and this is what's not happening no because for instance an example is if if you say and this was a, let's say berger blanc they had uncovered that people were um heart picking you know euthanizing the animals with a heart pick and it wasn't a vet it was just like a, one guy was like 19 technician. year old technician he wasn't even a technician what that was one of the the situations this was legal it no, wasn't no, legal, legal, but somebody went in with a camera. But the problem was, is do they go after that 19-year-old boy? Or who do you... You have to find out who told him to euthanize that animal. It should be, it should be on management. Uh, the, the rescues right. out there, it's not being managed well. And there might need to be a big change in management to make things work better, to allocate perhaps wherever this money is going to a better place. You know, if an animal needs to be vetted, you can't have an animal in pain. If one of my animals was sick or injured, I wouldn't just put it in a cage and say, okay, well... Just leave Die. it here until yeah. we have some... Of course uh, not. Get the money somehow. Bring them yeah. in, get yeah. them out. So basically, what it, it's like just about anything else. They could say uh, caveat emptor, which is buyer beware. And uh, if you're going to donate money, you really need to do some background digging yes. to uh, find out where you're donating your money and what the money is being used for. Mm -hmm. You need to ask some hard questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But shouldn't we somehow, you know, I, I'm going to say again, we've got to get back to this government thing. Yes. We've got to do something here. Pressure needs to be put on MAPAQ, which is M-A-P-A-Q. You can just Google it. Right. And anybody who's witnessed anything needs to report, you know, if you get but a funny who? feeling, but to, to MAPAQ. Oh, to them, sorry. It yes. is a government organization. It, is that a government yes. organization? Yes, it is. It is. Yep. I mean, how many people are in this government organization? It's a big place, Quebec. Its head office is Quebec City, but I mean, they, they do go in all over Quebec. But the problem is, is proving. So if I say, well, this animal, I suggest, I, this animal hasn't gone to the bathroom in seven days. Yeah. You need to take this to the vet. And the volunteer says, oh, no, we don't have money. Well, then they have to prove that. Like, it's, it's easy, unless, as I said, you see a cat being strung up. Yeah. It's, it's next to impossible to enforce. people from that? organization ever go in there themselves to see the conditions they do but they do. as long as they've got food and water which they do they have plenty of what water this is a stupid plenty of, yep. well, some then. of the this times what you see is uh, a lot of times map pack might go in or and then what happens is wind gets out before they 
get yeah, there. Though. And next thing you know, there's a bunch of cats that are being put on a bus and driven around the neighborhood for mm -hmm. the day oh. until mm -hmm. the, God, the raid I, is done. How and sick then, are these people doing this? Nuts. They are freaking, they, they need to be in an move event them from location asylum. to location. There's a lot of uh, volunteers who really deeply believe in what's going on. And they but, probably care and they, too. Okay, yes. well, well, let's bring a hundred cats to my house for the day while this investigation is going on over here. So that way it doesn't look like we have that many animals. They've got to screw loose these people. They I'm have sorry. signs saying, you know, beware. There may, don't answer the door to anybody tonight, for instance, because we think an inspector may show up. So they can't. If you well, but they're not that stupid then, are they? Because they know they're doing wrong. Yes. If they're afraid to be open about all this. Yes then then the, the, they know they're doing wrong. They know they're doing wrong. I did report um, there was some news coverage by the CBC, and unexpectedly the CBC showed up and, and yeah. called the operator, and she had no choice but to go to the place and basically show them around. And what she did is threatened a lawsuit if they... Yeah. shared the information or shared the video. Oh, you see, they know they're doing wrong. That's mm -hmm. probably where the uh, donations are going to, to lawsuits to keep people quiet. Quiet, yeah. Oh, yeah. no more. But Susan, there's no defamation here. I, I, I'm saying what I saw. I'm not, there's no defamation. This is not secondhand reports. I've spent a lot of time on this. Yeah, I know you have. People have come to have. me firsthand, and, and I said I have to get in myself because... You've got a lot of supporters, Susan, okay, who know and are backing you up. Yeah. We're uh, we're getting close yes, on so time. What, what are we listening to? I wanted Sorry, to say we we're listening to, to CIDI to... FM right. ninety nine point one, coming to you from beautiful downtown <laughs> Knowlton, or you could be listening to JLo, or uh, maybe even. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, yeah. We could be listening to Scotty. But Woke him up with J-Lo. You're listening to Unleashed with Emma and Richard. And Susan and Daryl. And Susan and Daryl. Yeah, how much time do we guest. have left? Very little time. Maybe about a minute. Okay. Uh, there's some good news. And uh, next week, I want to talk about Annie Match. Mm, and, I love Annie Match. Uh, this, is, this is a good news story. And it's, it's really great. I just wanted to close off quickly with uh, something that I heard from our uh, pet, Zoe. Uh, today, who uh, has, uh, she's psychic, in case you guys didn't know. <laughs> but, uh, basically, she was talking to Ben Franklin recently, and Ben told her that uh, beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. <laughs> Daryl, oh, yeah, Daryl, yeah. <laughs> tell us about you just a little bit. Have you got time? Come uh, on, you're a musician. Uh, uh, we uh, love musician. Musicians. Life Interrupted was a CD I released. Jeez, uh, I don't know what more to tell you. Kind of. Well, you're going to be playing June 1st? Yes, June oh, 1st where? at uh, Brasserie des Rapides in La Salle. It's uh, for a fundraiser for Petite Paws. So. Great. Excellent. Hopefully Great. you guys can make it. That would, that would be, be nice. nice. Yeah. And Scotty's a musician too. Out, right? oh, we'll have Scotty out as well. Yes, get yeah. Scotty out. We need him playing too. <laughs> so thank you everybody so thank, for listening thank in. Thank you guys thank so you. much. Thank, thank you, Susan, yes, Darryl. Susan and Daryl. And it's been great talking to you. Take care of each you. other and your furry friends. And your non-furry friends. And your non-furry friends. <laughs> Feathered ones too. <laughs> <laughs> and six-legged and eight-legged. Yeah. And God bless you, Susan. Keep you going too. with this. Yes, I Come am. back on the show. Okay, I will. Thank you Definitely. for having us. Bye for now. Bye. Ho, 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 ho.